will uh, never understand how some of the people behind this, who stood up for this, who spoke for this, especially at the Department of Homeland Security, can get up and go to work every day and look in the mirror, knowing that this has happened and that there's no effort being made to fix it, not one. Well, American and, and, and how many how many supporters of of Donald Trump uh, who claim to have certain value systems, uh, how they they have allowed children to be ripped from their mother's arms, uh, be locked away, uh, and have this part of the Trump administration's policy actively separating children from their mothers. More than three years ago on this show, we talked about the Trump administration's family separation policy and how many people were complicit in traumatizing countless children who tried to cross the border. And this morning, we're learning a lot more from a brand new 18-month investigation by The Atlantic entitled, We Need to Take Away the Children. Uh, take away children. The piece shows how separating children from their parents wasn't an unintended side effect of the plan. It was the plan. Again, we need to take away children. And there they are. Key officials from the Trump years anticipated the worst that could happen and ignored it when it did. How the policy could make a comeback if the people behind it returned to power. Joining us now, the author of the piece, staff writer at The Atlantic, Caitlin Dickerson. Caitlin, thank you uh, for coming on and for this reporting. And I'd like to start there with what did you find out about, I mean, we know where Donald Trump and Stephen Miller and, and folks in the inner circle stood on this. We can go over it. But what did you find out about different cabinet secretaries and people lower to mid-level jobs? Did they say anything to try and stop this? Was anybody flagging this policy as cruel? No one in the Trump administration's bureaucracy was surprised that the president and that people like Stephen Miller were pushing for very harsh enforcement policies, family separation being probably the pinnacle of that. Um, but what I was most interested to learn in reporting this story is how it actually came to be, knowing that you can't have a policy like this that impacts thousands of families with just a couple of political supporters. You need the members of the bureaucracy, and you also need the top political appointees of the administration, many of whom you know, say that they don't personally espouse these very harsh views on enforcement. And what happened was that they didn't stand up and they didn't push back and they didn't um, listen to red flags that were being raised from people who worked below them, from the subject matter experts who sit in apolitical roles, you know, many of whom have served under multiple administrations. They make up the vast majority of our, our executive branch, right? It's not just political appointees. It's mostly these apolitical subject matter experts. And when these folks raised red flags and said, you know, not only is this policy unethical, it's unfeasible. It's not, not practical practically possible for us to do this without losing track of parents and children. You know, those warnings were ignored because of, because of the immense pressure that these political appointees faced from their bosses. So uh, was the strategy to traumatize, um, and it, was that verbalized, uh, as we quoted coming into this? And secondly, I was very critical of people like the head of DHS. Did they make a concerted effort to try and stop this? Did anybody speak out? So Tom Holman, who was serving as the head of ICE, but was a, a lifelong, really, or uh, throughout his adult life, um, immigration enforcement officer, he came up with the idea to separate families as a deterrent. And the goal, in a sense, was to traumatize, but it's, it's this convention and law enforcement, the idea that you, you introduce harsh consequences against one person so that you discourage 10 more or 100 more from doing the same thing. And so the focus actually wasn't really on the thousands of families that were separated. They were seen as, you know, unfortunate but necessary casualties people who had to suffer in order to secure the border. It's a culmination of this strategy known as prevention by deterrence, which has really dominated our immigration enforcement apparatus since 9-11. 
And as border crossings increased, so too did these consequences that leaders in law enforcement came up with. Um, but the problem is that there's not a whole lot of evidence that, that these efforts actually work, um, nor are they, of course, worth it when you're talking about taking thousands of children away from their parents, some of whom are still separated today. Caitlin, great, uh, great reporting that you've got here, Instead, including those details about how some ICE officials and even some people in the DHS were disappointed when families got reunited too quickly because they felt that undermined the whole deterrence program. That, that in and of itself is remarkable. You had people there in the DHS when they saw that some families were being reunited, disappointed, not pleased that the kids were getting back with their parents. But talk a little bit about... The, the sort of different attitudes within the Trump administration, or rather some of the duplicity from some people in the Trump administration, it seems from your reporting almost as if people like Stephen Miller, who really believed in this program, were slightly misleading other members of the administration, Kirsten Nielsen being one of them at DHS, or at least not giving mm -hmm. them all of the information or all of the accurate information in order to get this policy through and implemented. Is that right? That's right. And it wasn't just Stephen Miller. It was people like Tom Homan, who I mentioned, who was the head of ICE, Kevin McAleenan, who was the head of CBP, um, in conversations with Kirsten Nielsen, who was the DHS secretary, you know, who is the highest ranking law enforcement official who's responsible for this and signed off on it. There's no getting around it. But what I learned, which is really important, is that she wasn't given good information. She was told that processes were in place that would allow for the swift reunification of children and parents within a few days after prosecutions of parents took place, uh, which, as you pointed out, was this argument that came up you know, when the public finally came to understand that thousands of families had been separated um, after many months of being completely misled about it. You know, the administration changed course and started to say, well, the prosecution was the goal. It wasn't separation. Um, and that wasn't the case. And Kirsten Nielsen was given bad information. And that part of that is what led to her signing this off. Wow. Staff writer at The Atlantic, Caitlin Dickerson, thank you very much for your reporting this morning.